So our next speaker is Professor Elizabeth Broadbent. Elizabeth is an engineer, I didn't know that, Elizabeth, <laughs> who became fascinated by human psychology. She works at the intersection of health, psychology and technology and has a strong interest in the emotional connections we form with robots. Much of her work is about how we can build emotional intelligence and, and empathy in robots to help support patients, including the design of virtual humans with artificial intelligence. Thanks, Elizabeth. Kia ora koutou. Uh, thank you everyone for coming and thank you to the event organisers for inviting me to speak. So today I want to raise the issue of loneliness. Loneliness um, affects around 50% of Americans and here in New Zealand we can't be complacent in the 2021 uh, census, 44% uh, of people reported feeling lonely in the last four weeks. So loneliness refers to um, a distressing feeling when people feel like their needs are not being met by the quality and quantity of their relationships. Social isolation is similar, but it's more objective measures of being alone, living alone, and the number of friends we have. So the bad news is that loneliness is increasing. And the Office of the US Surgeon General recently put out a call to action to try and reduce loneliness. You can see it um, with these graphs here, this is the number of hours um, that are spent during certain things. So you can see that social isolation is increasing, um, whereas companionship is reducing and the number of hours that we spend with family, friends and other people is also reducing. So why is this important? So as well as being a distressing experience, social isolation and loneliness actually increase the risk of mortality by 26 and 29% respectively. And this graph is showing us that um, the odds of premature mortality uh, for, social, for lacking social isolation is equivalent to smoking 15 cigarettes a day. And it's more than alcohol, uh, lack of physical activity obesity and air pollution. So it's a really major problem. How does social connection or lack of social connection uh, impact our uh, mortality? Well, it's through several pathways, one of which is biological. So when we uh, feel lonely, uh, we feel unsafe, we feel more vulnerable, we feel more anxious, more depressed. And what this can do is it affects inflammation. So it results in uh, chronic activation of stress hormones, which leads to increased inflammation, which then puts us at greater risk of heart disease, uh, progression of cancer, stroke, um, as well as increased risk of getting an infectious disease. Um, another act, uh, pathway is through um, health behaviours like lack of physical activity, uh, lack of sleep, etc. So what are the factors that contribute to um, social isolation? So there are socio-demographic factors. We know that older people and people with disabilities are more lonely. Uh, we know that the way that we build our schools and workplaces can contribute to social connection or not, as well as different aspects of our culture. But one aspect is technology. So there is a rise in the use of technology, as you will all know. 93% uh, of Americans have an internet-connected cell phone, uh, and 92% of New Zealanders do. So this can have positive effects as well as negative effects. So we saw that during the COVID pandemic, actually having an internet connection increased social connection with other people, but we also know that um, spending too much time on your uh, smartphone can reduce in less time with friends and family, um, and also can result online bullying, uh, as well as the spread of misinformation. So the question is, how can we design technology to increase social connection? And can we um, build technologies like we see in the movies like Star Wars, where we've got friendly and useful robots? 
So here at the University of Auckland, uh, particularly with the CARES Robotics Research Group, we've been doing research on robots. Um, one of these is Paro, which is a cute companion seal robot that you can pet and cuddle. Um, it responds by moving its uh, flippers and its tail and makes cute seal noises. So we did a randomized control trial with Paro, so it showed that it reduced loneliness in a rest home compared to their other activities like playing bingo or going on a bus trip. The other robots we've been using uh, in retirement villages to do various healthcare activities like monitoring um, COPD, monitoring blood pressure, providing cognitive stimulation. And what we found in these studies is that even though we weren't targeting companionship, people reported making friends with the robots and missing the robots when we took them away. We've been doing research looking at how we can make robots more social. Um, some of the ways we can do that is by making them proactive, so they initiate conversations, they're responsive, they remember what you told them last time and follow up with that. Um, they can use psychological techniques to motivate behaviour change, uh, display attachment behaviours like play and saying they miss us. Uh, and we can build good communication skills like eye contact um, and showing attention. So the frequency of our interactions with robots, the functions they provide and the quality of those interactions are all important components to see effects on uh, companionship and health outcomes. Not only robots, but also um, these digital characters uh, may also be useful for loneliness. So uh, we've got Replica there, um, which is a um, commercial app uh, saying, I've been missing you. So it's, it's um, for loneliness. On the other side, we've got a Soul Machines um, digital human who uh, have recently incorporated ChatGPT into their technology to make conversations more natural. So this is an ongoing research area. How can we make uh, technology more personable and increase social connections rather than reducing social connectivity? And I'd like to thank my colleagues at um, CARES Centre of Robotics Research, Soul Machines, and uh, the School of Bioengineering. <laughs>